morning, Pilgrim. Your announcements for this morning are as follows. Pilgrim family, your help is needed for the post-COVID kitchen cleanup on Saturday, November 19th at noon. Everyone is welcome and needed. If you are available, please see Sister Beverly Douglas immediately following morning worship service. Keep in mind, the kitchen cannot be officially open until it has been cleaned, disinfected, and sanitized. Thank you. There will be no in-person high school Bible study on Monday, November 14th, but Sister Johnson will text you your homework assignment, which will be due next Sunday. Amen. 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 There will be Bible study for the elementary and middle school children on Wednesday, November 16th at 6.30 p.m. Please bring out your children and grandchildren for Bible study on Wednesdays. Amen. We're going to be passing out turkey baskets this year. If you know of anyone who is in need of one, please contact the church office by mail or email. It is very important that they supply their name, address, and phone number to receive a basket. Also next week, the Union District Congress of Christian Education <coughs> cop classes will be held at Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 6 to 9 p.m. The classes for next week are Effective Bible Reading by Pastor Larry Harris, Christian Stewardship by Pastor Paul Love, Introduction to Discipleship by Reverend Tommy Burnell, Christianity and Contemporary Issues by Dean Denise Posey, and church staff development, which will be held on Zoom by our own sister Linda Cruchon. If you have any questions, please see Sister Ed Dykes. Please go for yourself according to the announcement you've heard. Now, Sister Tanya Williams has an announcement, and then Pastor Johnson will come. Amen. Amen. Let me say a good day to Pastor Johnson. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. I am Tanya, one of the nurses here at the church, and as you know, um, I was um, elected to kind of have ongoing communication with Dr. Virginia Kane, who is the medical director of the Marion County Public Health Department, um, as far as our COVID mandates and masking and things like that. And last conversation I had with her um, was about kind of um, uh, decreasing the restrictions that we have and she has given her okay. So as of next Sunday, um, face masks are optional. Um, but I want you to say this along with that, they're optional, but if you are immune compromised, if you have health conditions that make you high risk, if you are taking care of someone who has health conditions or are immune compromised, if you know you're sick, if you're coughing, Okay, because even if you get vaccinated, you still can get COVID. Um, if you have any of these things, we ask that you wear a mask, protect others, and use common sense. If you know you're coughing, you know you're taking care of somebody, continue to wear your mask. Because remember, we're in the flu and cold season, so sometimes the flu may not be a flu, maybe be COVID, even if you've been vaccinated. So we have to remember to protect others. This is not just about you, it's about protecting others. Thank you. 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 Thank so you might as well give God praise. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the name of our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ushers, you may allow those persons into the, into the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, let us thank God for our sister, Sister Tanya, who came up here to, uh, to help us walk through this, this post-COVID season that we're in. Um, we're not all the way out of the pandemic, but we are in the back end of the pandemic. And so we want to continue to uh, 
just be mindful of the fact that COVID is still among us and COVID ain't going nowhere. And so let us continue to uh, just uh, proceed with caution and with common sense uh, as we continue to protect ourselves as, as well as our brothers and sisters in the faith. Amen. Amen. Um, I have been uh, speaking with seasoned pastors these last a uh, few days that I've been elected here, and one of the things that uh, somebody gave me as far as just insight and advice when it comes to being on staff as an associate pastor and the difference between an associate pastor and a senior pastor, one of the differences is that associate pastor makes uh, suggestions. I've been making suggestions. Uh, and then uh, the difference is that the senior pastor makes decisions. Yes, sir. Uh, so there is a difference between making suggestions yeah. and making decisions. Yeah. And one of the decisions uh, that I have made in these few days is that we are changing the language of the masking, all right? Uh, previously, it has been stated that it is a requirement for the mask. It is no longer a requirement starting December 4th. I know she said next week, but we're going to push it back to December 4th just so that we can get people uh, communicating with other people who aren't here today, communicating with our family and friends, so that message can seek into us. Uh, but not only uh, is, are we going to say that it's optional, but we're going to say that it is strongly recommended uh, for you to have your mask on in the house of the Lord. Amen. So whether you want your mask on, whether you want it off, that's cool. But we're going to say strongly recommending uh, that you uh, that you wear your mask when we come into the house of the Lord, giving God praise and glory and honor. And speaking of December fourth, I know that we are excited about our time together as we celebrate the union between pastor and people. I'm excited. My family uh, is excited. All of us are excited about that. And so one of the things that I just want to make clear about December 4th is that December 4th is not the installation service. I know that's the word on the street, but that ain't true. Amen. Uh, it is not our installation service. You will know when the installation service will come around. This is just our inaugural service as pastor and people, and we want to celebrate that as such. So if you hear anybody talk about installation service, just, just keep it real with them. Be respectful, but let them know that this is not our installation weekend, our installation service. That won't happen until uh, next year. I'm praying sometime in the spring. But until then, we will continue to build this excitement and uh, momentum for December 4th. I know uh, people are talking about they're going to come in. And so regardless of the reason why they're here on that day, December 4th, we just want to create an environment where people feel loved and accepted and an environment where God is worshiped in spirit and in truth. His work will go forth. People will be saved. God will be changed. People will recommit themselves back to the church and back to the kingdom of God. So I want to ask you, Pilgrim, if you know of anybody, your brothers and sisters in the faith, those who ain't been here all year long, those who you ain't seen in three years, those you ain't seen in five years, invite them, let them know that we're going to come back in this uh, building December 4th to worship God in spirit and the truth as we commemorate and celebrate of the new era, the new chapter of this great church. Amen. 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 All right. And so one of the things that I am um, working on as it relates to not just December 4th, because, you know, I'm excited about December 4th, but I'm even more excited about December 11th. I just don't want folk to come on December 4th and we don't see them at all. I want to see them on the following Sunday and the Sunday after that too, amen? And so one of the things that I am um, working on, taking upon myself as, as, a, as a small project, if you will, uh, is just to get the word out on, on online. And so I have been working on some uh, video projects and things of that nature. And so I would love your help in this, okay? And so next Sunday, somebody say next Sunday. Amen. Next Sunday after service, if you could do me a favor, Pilgrim, for those of you who ain't camera shy, okay? Um, I am looking for those of you who can help me get the word out. And so I'm gonna have not a camera crew, but one person with a camera. They're gonna come up on campus uh, next Sunday and after church. If you're willing to stay around for a little bit, we're just gonna ask you a few questions. Your name, 
how long you've been a member at Pilgrim, what you like most about Pilgrim, and what you are looking forward to in this new chapter, that will be, that will make my heart glad. You can just help me out with my little video project uh, as we get the word out and build this excitement, uh, not just about December 4th, but about the new thing that God is up to, okay? So next Sunday, after church, uh, we'll probably be set up in a, a fellowship hall somewhere. Uh, I'll let you know exactly where we'll be. Uh, but next Sunday after church, I would love for a few of you all uh, just to help me out uh, with that project. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm so looking forward to hearing uh, uh, the word on today from, from our, one of our associates, uh, Reverend Belton. I know uh, he will bring a mighty word from the Lord. And, and uh, I'm, you, you all will continue to hear me say this and echo this in, as I called this last week, the month of transition. Um, I just want to continue to share my gratitude and uh, just my thanks to all of the associate ministers for holding it down in the pulpit. Through the pandemic, through the pastoral search, I want to thank God for the music ministry holding it down through all that time. All the leaders and deacons and trustees search committee, all of you uh, who have continued to do the work as unto the Lord. I'm going to echo this. Y'all don't get tired of me hearing me saying thank you, but when my, my mama used to say, when somebody do good, just the least you can do is tell them thank you. And so, thank you, Pilgrim, uh, for your commitment to the house of God, for your commitment uh, to God our Father as we continue to move uh, forward into what God has in store for us. Last week, I was upset with myself because I didn't say thank you uh, for all of the, the warm welcome. Uh, I got letters from the youth ministry, from the junior usher board, from, from individuals just congratulating my family and I and welcoming us uh, into the household of faith here at Pilgrim. We've been going to lunch and dinner and concert with folks, and so we are so appreciative of the warm welcome here, um, and, and, and of course, I mean, y'all family, I've, I've been, I've, I've married into the family of Pilgrim, and so um, I'm excited about uh, what God is going to do, and I just want to say thank you for your warm welcome for my family and I, all right? I'm done. I can't wait to get back into the spirit of God as we worship God together in spirit of the truth. We're going to hear from our great music ministry, and then right after that, we'll hear a powerful word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
phones work better when you turn them on. There we go. See, you see, that was my mistake. God is an awesome God. He is an awesome God and greatly to be great. Don't put no tempo, don't put no tempo, just leave it loose. God is great and greatly to be praised. First of all, to Pastor Leg Johnson, uh, to the Deacon Board, the Deaconesses, all of the dignitaries. Uh, even in my thoughts, Pastor Emeritus Waddington, my friend, uh, to all of God's children on this morning, uh, I just want to preach. Uh, when you, if you have your Bibles, come with me to the book of Mark. The book of Mark. Uh, and when you get to the book of Mark, come to chapter 4. Chapter 4 is the door that we want to knock on and just want to see if for a few minutes we can get verses 35 through 40 to talk back to us. In the book of Mark, chapter 4 is the door. And when you are there, say, I'm ready to knock. So then here we go. Starting at verse number 35. And the same day, when the even was come, he said unto them, this is Jesus speaking, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with them other little ships. 37 said that, and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he, this is Jesus being referred to, he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they, meaning the disciples, they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he, Jesus, arose 
and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Verse number 40, the doxology of the text says, And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Uh, and if I just had about 10 to 15 minutes of your time, God would give me good preaching power. I just want to preach from the, the thought peace in the storm. Peace in the storm. Well, since you can have your seats, let everybody in. Uh, it was on last Sunday that Pastor Led Johnson stood in the pulpit and he declared that God had revealed to him that this month of November is indeed a month of transition. He's transitioning away from roles and responsibilities at Eastern Star and stepping into the main chair here at Pilgrim as God has decided. And so he just made it very clear for us that the difference is before he made suggestions as an associate pastor and now he will make decisions here. That's a transition. Pilgrim as a church body is transitioning out of a period where we were looking for something. We were searching and hoping that God would reveal to us what he had done. And so now that he has revealed how his hand has moved, now we transition from having a retired pastor emeritus to having a pastor elect who will step in. And so now we have to, as a church body, as a people, transition. Our mindset has to transition. Our roles may transition. And so that is a period of adjustment that we have to prepare for. Even, even, consider, consider our country. We just came past the midterm election. Wherein some political pundits were predicting a red wave that would ultimately move us a step closer back to the backwards racist thinking of Donald Trump and set him up for another room. Thank God that we did not have that happen and the country decided we're going to continue to try to move forward. But we are still, nevertheless, as a country, in a period of transition. Our city, if you turn on the news, every time you turn on the news, someone else has been shot. Someone else has been found murdered. And so it would seem to us that our city is transitioning from a place of peace to a place where you might want to get out of. We are transitioning. And so then of course it would make sense that here in our local assembly that God, to coin what Pastor Johnson just said, is up to something. What is he up to? I'm glad you asked. Let's consider the text. In the text, we find Jesus and he's been teaching and preaching. So much so that the word got out that it was Jesus and he could not even stay on the land to teach the multitudes. He had to uh, charter a boat and get out on the water so that everybody could hear him and he would not be pressed or crushed by the mass of humanity. He's preaching, he's teaching, and he's doing it in a parable form and, and then the disciples who are with him still are perplexed by some of the parables. Until Jesus asked them, how, how is it that you don't understand this? If you can't get the simple things and you've been walking with me, you've been talking with me, you've been eating with me, we, we, if you can't get the little things, how, how is it that I can entrust you? How can I send you out two by two if you can't get things? So after Jesus had been teaching, and I'm trying to hurry up and move. Bible says he was out on the ship. And this is where I love to read and, 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 and really get the background of the scripture because he is 100% man and he is 100% God. There are times where his physical man needed to rest. And so in the text, his physical man, after a long day of preaching and serving and ministering to the multitudes, his physical man needed to rest. So much 
so that while he was on the ship, he said to the disciples, let us pass over. It's important what he said, let us pass over because one of the other things that Pastor Johnson said last week is that we are going to come together not to create excitement, but impact. Jesus was speaking to the disciples because he had plans for them to cross over and create not excitement, but impact. But the text tells us that when Jesus launched away, there were some other little ships that followed him. He did not tell the little ships Come on, let's pass over. He was talking to those who he had plans for. But watch the grace and mercy of God. And Pilgrim, this is why we have to be careful. Because we are in transition. There will be some people here on December 4th that we've not seen before. That may or may not be coming for excitement or impact. But guess what? You can't decide who is who. So when they get here, you don't see that the text says the disciples went up on the stern of the ship and told all the ships go away. The disciples stayed in their place. And the little ships that left off on their own, even though God did not tell them to come, were still about to witness the power of God. Come here, let me help you. Just because they don't look like you look, just because they may not have been in church as long as you have, just because you didn't tell them to come again, don't mean you can sit them out. God said, let them come, because I'm about to do something. Even though he did not tell the little ships to come, he still covered them. So, Bible said that Jesus, when he got into the ship, he commissioned them. He said, let's go. We got to cross over. And it's important because God is fully man and fully human that even though his physical man needed rest, the God man got into position. The Bible said that Jesus rested in the hindered part of the ship. The hinder part of the ship. Some, something about that arrested my curiosity. When I read hinder, because that, that's, that's different. It didn't just say he got on the ship and he was up by the, the office or he was at the front of the, the hinder part of the ship. I, I've never been in the military, never been in the Marines or the Navy, never been in the Air Force, but when I saw that, I decided to do some background. The, the, the hinder part of the ship refers to the back of the ship. What, what is normally found in the back of the ship? The engine room is found in the back of the ship. The thing that powers the ship so that it can even go in the first place is found in the back of the ship. If you're talking about a battle cruiser, the weapons are found in the hinder part of the ship. If, if you're talking about something that lets the jets take off. They land on the hinder part of the ship. What are you trying to say? When God got on that boat, his physical man rested, but the God man got into position to take care of every need that the Lord. Some, some, somebody's got hell in their house. Somebody's got hell on their job. Somebody's kids lost their mind this week. And you're wondering, God, why are you silent? He's not silent. He's in the inner part of your situation. The only reason why you ain't killed that child is because God is in the hinder part. The only reason why you ain't cussed out everybody on that job is because God is protected. The only reason you ain't lost your mind. He's in the hinder part of the ship. So whether I need power to keep walking, he's got it. Whether I need protection. 
action for him to fight my battle. He was in position. Whatever I need. He's in the hinder part of the ship. Now, Bible said that in verse 37 that a great storm arose. They had launched out. Jesus has the disciples on the boat with him. He's gone down. He's not on the top side. He's down in the hinder part. Now, Jesus has been exciting the passions of the people for some time now. Jesus is both the hottest ticket in town and public enemy number one. His physical man should have been worried about the political figures that wanted him dead. His, his physical man should have been worried that they didn't send the hand for no provisions. The Bible said that they took him as he was, meaning he didn't send no messenger, say this is where we're going to be at, this is what we're going to need. He just said, I'm tired, let's go. Has anybody ever had a day like that where you at the end of the day don't feel like talking to one? Suffering. 
rise to the level that it matches that on the outside of the boat. And so it does not matter, beloved, what your situation looks or feels like to you. If God ain't panicked, There are 
are still some folk well. running around mad. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell the truth to this. Listen, listen, this is what God is helping me with. Pilgrim, I've been here my entire life and I love you. God knows I do. But you can't, you did not call me. So you can't stop me either. I am going to preach with theological freedom because God said it here. Whether you want to hear it or not, God said it. Tell me. So there are still some of you that are running around here man. And you have put on a happy face to hide your true feelings. God said, be still. You were on Facebook campaigning, talking about the, 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 the pastoral search committee because you misunderstood what was happening. You thought this was some sort of holy popularity contest. And it never was. And so now you just biding your time until you feel like you can cause division. God said, be still. at work here too. Pastor Elect Johnson is not here because of who his daddy is. Let me couch that. He's not here because of who his earthly father is. He's not here because he's got a popular face and a name that goes across the nation. He is here because before the foundations of the earth Some food. 
So now, as I get ready to get out, I got to close. But I saw something from one of my favorite preachers, Dr. Frank E. Ray. And it's his clothes. I make no mistake about it. I'm not telling you that I came up with it. I'm giving him full credit. <laughs> but I believe it speaks to our situation on today. About how we can find peace in the storm. Dr. Ray said it this way. Said that one day science and faith were having a conversation. And science said to faith, you believe in all of that silly stuff that you can't even see. But faith, I dare you to get behind me and I'll show you everything that I know. And so faith said to science, very well science. And so as they started walking, they came upon a flower bed. Science turned to look at faith and said, I can tell you every flower that's in this garden. That over there is a chrysanthemum. That over there is a dandelion. That over there is a daffodil. Faith looked at science and said, that's good science. They kept on walking with science leading faith. And they came upon a forest. Science turned to faith and said, I can tell you every tree that's in this forest. He said, that over there is a pecan tree. That over there is a willow tree. That over there is an oak tree. Faith looked at science and said, very good science. They continued walking until they came upon a boulder in the middle of the road. Science looked at faith and said, I can tell you just how old that rock is by simply having a closer look at it. And faith looked at science and said, very good science. They kept on walking until they came to a body of water. And science stopped at the edge of the lake. Faith pushed him in the back and said, keep on going. Science turned around and looked at faith and said, I can't go no further because there's no bridge to cross over. Faith said, no. well, let me have a crack at it. I've been following you. Now you follow me. Faith took science back to the flower bed. They said, you name all manner of flowers. But I never heard you say anything about the rose of Sharon.
where we can find peace in whatever storm that we face. Pastor, you will find peace in whatever storm you face. Doesn't matter who stands with you. It's who you're standing on. You've got a firm foundation in the midst of whatever storm happens here. And I've seen it. Listen, I'm done. I'm done. I've, I've seen it. I've sat under two of the most successful pastors that Pilgrim's ever seen. I know that every day will be a great day. I know that some folk, when you don't approve the budget for their annual day, well, they will cuss you. I know that some folk, when you start to move how God is going to move you, they ain't going to like you. So what? When God tells you to move now, I know you came in and you said, I'm going to watch, I'm going to observe. There will be some things that God will show you that you need to fix right now. That can't keep going on. And he's going to put it in your spirit and you're going to handle it with him. But when those times come, don't doubt. Don't move how God is going to use you here because God puts you here. I'm going to echo, as I go my seat, I'm going to echo what Pastor Johnson said. We are coming together, not to create excitement. Now don't misunderstand, there's going to be excitement wherever God is. Wherever God moves, there's going to be excitement. See the pool of the death, all the folk that get over there and chuck in the water. See, any time that Jesus preached, there's going to be excitement whenever God moves. But the point of why we assemble is to create impact on the lost. That's why we come together. And so now the doors of the church are open. If, if you are here today, if you're in the house today, you can come, you can give your life to Christ. There are people who are here, who are equipped, who are ready to take you in. If you are on uh, what is it, Facebook, how are you watching this live? Whatever it is, if you're virtual and you want to know how to get in contact with this body, Facebook Messenger is what they told me to tell you. Facebook Messenger, get on there. Give us your information. And watch this. Even if you don't want to be here, you say, I just want to be in a church, but I don't think Pilgrim is right for me. Give us your info and we'll send you there. We want you to be saved. That's the goal. We don't want anyone to come in this place and say that I did not hear the word preached or I was not able to be saved in that place. Bill, when we come to exalt the Savior, as we exalt him, he edifies us. And then together we evangelize the lost. That's why we come. That's the only tradition that needs to continue in building. That's the only tradition. Y'all get mad at me all you want to. That's the only thing that must continue in building. Your annual day don't have to be on the same day. You don't have to have that same color no more. Enough foolishness, Bill. Enough. This is a great body of believers. And God has given us our man. God bless you. God keep you. May he calls his face to smile at you.
is still going. It is prayer time. And on our prayer list today, we have Sister B. Chandler, Brother Charles B., Pastor Leroy Wallington, Sister Libby Browder, Sister Vicki Boozer, Sister Vivian Spivey, Brother Walter Travis, Sister Rebecca Lane, Sister Sarah Lehman, Sister Barbara Thompson, and Ava Jones Burton. And those that may have been omitted from the prayer list today, we want to pray for those also. Those who are in the sick rooms, in the jailhouses, in our city streets. We want to continue to pray for those people as well. Shall we go to the Lord in prayer? Most holy, merciful Father, again, a few of your children have gathered in your temple today to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Lord, we want to thank you for last night's lying down and this morning's early rising. Lord, we know that you are a God who sits high and looks low. So Lord, we just want to thank you today for all the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. You didn't have to do it, but you did. We don't deserve it, but because you love us so much, you gave us another day. A day that we've never seen before, and a day that we'll never see again. For that, we want to say thank you. So Lord, I ask you today to watch over that, that man, that woman, that boy, girl, out there, dear Father, who do not know your name and pardon their sins. Touch their hearts and their minds today, dear Father. Let them know that you are God, and God all by yourself. And that you can do all things. You can be that bridge over troubled water. You can be that shelter in the time of storm. You can be a mother to the motherless, a father to the fatherless. Lord, we just want to say thank you. And Lord, we ask you to continue to bless this church that stands on this corner. Let it continue to be a beacon of light that shines so bright that those who go by may become crying. What must I do to be saved? The Lord asks you to bless them, continue to bless the leadership of this church. Allow us to be united as one. To be able to continue the work in your kingdom. The Lord, we ask you to just, just continue to be God and God all by yourself. Lord, we know that we haven't been all that we can. But thank God we're not what we used to be. For that we want to say thank you. And Lord, we ask you to, to bless this offering that we're about to take up there, Father, that it will continue to allow us to do the work in your kingdom. These blessings and many more, we ask you, Lord, Son, of Jesus' name. Now, Lord, we ask you to continue to bless us as we leave this place, but never from thy presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're down the hands of the deacon. 